G'day, g'day. It's Stefan Angelini from Angel Advisory. Thanks again for checking in for another economic wrap on the 9th of March, 2023. Today's going to be a bloody fun one. Not really. It's actually going to be a bit somber. Um, we're going to talk about some pretty bad things. So why the current bounce or the exact the current environment might not be the recovery like we saw back in 2008. Why, sorry, after 2008 and 2009. Um, we're going to talk about the 2021 bubble. So what did extremely well? We're actually, we're going to talk about whether or not this bubble has popped. So um, we've been listening to a lot of really smart people uh, talk about some extremely important topics um, just to help us determine how we are positioning our portfolios over the next little while. So um, if you want to if you want to proceed with caution and listen to the full episode and let me explain to you just how bad things might be or just how bad things might not be, please uh, follow us on our podcast or Spotify or head on over to our YouTube channel. It's Real Wealth with Stefan Angelini and you can watch the full episode. So thank you very much for viewing. If not, good to see you. If you are staying on, guess what? Here's a little disclaimer. Please don't consider this as personal advice. Please just consider it as general information. If you want any personal advice, please go and consult a licensed financial planner. Now, let's get into the dark and dull days and see exactly what I'm talking about. Just so you know, the S&P gained 1.9, S&P 500 gained 1.96% last week. So people are, are like, oh, okay. So there was a weekly US dollar, bond stabilizing, but hey, guess what? This week, the markets are down because they're expecting inflation will stay high and interest, interest rates will keep rising at an even faster rate. So what some uh, commentators out there are saying, this one's from Christopher Joy, is that he actually thinks that the big post GFC bounce that we saw over in 2009, where which it was more of a buy the dip scenario, he's actually saying in this can in this scenario it might be better off selling the rip. Um, now he's thinking that when these bear markets rally, normally governments have a heap of money they pump back into the economy, they decrease uh, they decrease interest rates to get the economy running again. Now this is exactly the opposite, where governments can't spend more money, they can't do quantitative easing because it's already been done. And therefore, we can't try and promote people to spend money because inflation is an issue. So it's very different to the way it was back in 2009. So the fundamentals are so different. Uh, and that means that he just doesn't see it being exactly the same scenario. However, there were big decreases back in, the, back in 2022. Equity markets around the world were down. Um, so he's saying it might be a good opportunity to look at different kinds of assets to get a return being income assets, bonds, high yielding debt, something of that rather than taking on equity risk. Now, just to sort of add to this, there's been uh, Dr. Graham Shaw, who runs a pretty big international fund. He's saying that there was a bubble created in 2021. Valuations were quite crazy. And he actually doesn't think the bubbles burst. So he's picking the bubble has started to slow, but it still hasn't popped. And he thinks that valuations for some companies are still extremely high. So he's taking a value tilting portfolio, which is sort of what we're thinking as well. Growth stocks are still very scary, um, but having well-valued companies that are still quite undervalued um, are, is a good position for the portfolio. So let me unpack what this bubble means a little bit to you. So in 2021, rates were pretty, uh, in 2021, conditions were pretty much perfect to create a bubble. Rates were close to zero. The governments were writing checks. Money was free. People were spending. Companies were making money. If you remember the things that were making money, these meme stocks, there were Dogecoin. There was the board op app board. Here we go. The um, NFTs, the board ape yacht club. They so if you don't know what the board ape yacht club is, basically they said that there was a collection of ten thousand unique digital collectibles living on the Ethereum, Ethereum blockchain. So 10,000 unique. That's no irony right there, but there's a lot of them. Um, some of them traded for 420 grand apiece, some fetched for $3.4 million. Um, and anyway, so some might think it was quite crazy. Uh, we thought it was a bit crazy back in the day. And let's just have a look at what's happened since then. Uh, some of those crazy assets have crashed in price. So since the price of the record setting board ape, the price of these are now down 97%. Dogecoin has lost 87% of its value. Bitcoin and Ethereum are down 73% from their peaks. Um, and of course, some financial promoters have been arrested for some of the things they are doing. And celebrities sued, get old Kim Kardashian. Um, 
So where are we now? Bored Apes still sell for about 85 grand a pop, which isn't too bad. The Dogecoin still has a $9.5 billion market cap. GameStop, the company that sells downloadable games in physical stores, is still valued at 10 times higher than it was in the pre-meme days, uh, whereas their competitors are still valued at next to nothing. Tesla, for example, has a market cap that's halved from its $1.2 trillion market cap, but it's still four times larger then the I'll see it's still so much larger than the four largest automakers combined, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so this sort of pegs a lot of commentators to think the valuations are still high. These companies pre-COVID were not this good and therefore has the bubble burst. So from the peak of the tech bubble, just so you know, from the peak of the tech bubble back in 2001, it took three years for the market to hit the bottom. And that was just a slow and steady decline. Over that time, value stocks tended to outperform growth a lot. Um, and that's where a lot of the market ran to. So they still say that a lot of these tech companies, growth stocks, meme stocks are still quite highly, val have high valuations. And therefore, it might just be worth looking out for value companies in stock markets. So things that have low PE multiples, are profitable businesses, can outlast um can outlast increases in interest rates and have low debt. These might prove to be really valuable investments in the current environment. Whether you're investing personally, whether you're running a business, that's why it's best to sometimes run low levels of debt because rising interest rates, if you can't sell things, then your company's going to come up a whole, come under a whole heap of hurt. So that's a quick little wrap for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Sorry for being so somber. I'm normally a really excited guy and I get excited about this kind of thing. But yeah, you just have to sometimes just keep your awareness up understand what's happening in the entire environment to help you shape your own investment portfolio. So thank you for listening. Hopefully next time we catch up, I can be a bit happier and give you some really great news. But if not, have a great day anyway. See you later.